Today, we're gonna to be entering in the 3D world of DaVinci Resolve and creating this effect right here. This is an effect that I use on a recent edit of mine and I figured I'd walk you guys through how to do it yourself. If you are looking for realistic 3D effects, this tutorial is not for you. This is for somebody who's doing some simple motion graphics or you wanna add some kind of fun animation for your YouTube videos. If you're wanting to do more complicated 3D things, your time is gonna be better spent in Blender. DaVinci can do 3D and that's what we're gonna do, but it's not gonna have the tool set to create probably some of the looks that you want that something like Blender would have for creating realistic 3D compositions. With that said, let's go ahead and hop into it. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna start with a fusion composition. Go ahead and drag one of those guys onto your timeline. You don't have to start with the fusion composition, but for us, it's gonna give us a blank template to work with. Now I'm also working with a 60 frame per second timeline, which I know is blasphemous for a lot of people out there, but I work with gamers and this is just the frame rate that a lot of gamers like to work with. So this is where I'm starting out. Now let's go ahead and hop into Fusion. Now I'm going to make the assumption that you know how to at least navigate in Fusion. You don't have to have a mastery comprehension of how to use Fusion to do this tutorial, but if you've never used nodes before, this might feel a bit overwhelming and I would recommend following a basics of Fusion's tutorial at some point. With that said, the two images I'm gonna work with today are this DaVinci Resolve logo, and I also have my own logo. Uh, the reason we're gonna do two is because a lot of you guys are gonna work with shapes that aren't perfectly square and round. But let's start nice and easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my images, and I'm gonna drag in the logo that I would like to extrude. We've got our nice, mostly square DaVinci Resolve logo. And normally if you were in Fusion and you wanted to display this image, what you might do is you might add a background node, bring the alpha all the way down so that it's completely transparent, merge your image over the background, and then connect it to the media out. If I toggle my display to the media out, we now have a working frame with our image in it. Our goal today is to extrude out this image and give it a little bit of thickness so that we can rotate it in 3D space. So here's what we're gonna do to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and hold shift to disconnect it from our main fusion pipeline. And we need to place this thing in 3D land. Now, again, if you've never operated in the 3D space in DaVinci Resolve, essentially all we're gonna be doing is placing our image in both an X, Y, and Z coordinate and then giving it some thickness. So in order for us to do that, we need to connect our image node here to some things that place it in this 3D space. And the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna use some of the shape nodes and extrude those shape nodes. Because our image is mostly square and rectangular, I'm gonna go ahead and add an S rectangle node. The shape node suite within DaVinci Resolve is DaVinci's way of creating vector-based objects. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to add an extrude node. Now the extrude node is a bit funky because it's pretty particular with what you can plug into it. If I wanted to connect my image to the uh, shape input, I can't do that. The extrude input has to be some kind of shape node, I think, in DaVinci Resolve, but it's not gonna work with videos or images. So in order for us to make this work, we're gonna connect our S rectangle node to the extrude node. Now I'm gonna go ahead and toggle my preview to this extrude node by tapping the number two. I can click in my middle mouse wheel to pan around and alt in the middle mouse button will let us rotate and control in the mouse wheel will let us zoom in. You can see we got our we got our rectangle right here. Now all we need to do is connect our image to the our extrude node down here and bam, there you go. So now we have our image in 3D space, but if I go to the extrude node and I add some depth to this or some thickness, we're getting there, but it looks uh, it looks a little empty. That is because our image isn't quite hitting the outer boundaries of our rectangle. So what I can do is I can add a transform node, the one with the XF underneath our image here, excuse me, and I can just increase the size a little bit. And you, you can see as we begin to hit the outer boundaries of our rectangle here, now the edges are beginning to fill in. Now for perfectly rectangular or square objects, that's all you need to do. You just need to increase the size a little bit so it hits the gaps. But because ours has some uh, curvature on the corners. I'm gonna click on our S rectangle node and just increase our corner radius until it is all closed up. There you go. Now you have our 3D object in 3D space. So the next step for us would be to animate this and use a 3D camera. But one of the questions you probably have is, okay, Brandon, that's great for like a square or circular object, but what if our shape isn't like that? 
well, life is a little bit harder for you, but uh, we can still make the same effect happen. We'll just have to use a different combination of nodes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my logo, which is all sorts of funky, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same workflow, except for instead of the S rectangle node, I'm gonna use an S polygon node. Now the S polygon node is exactly the same as the polygon node, except it works with the shape node system. So here's the trick to doing something like this. DaVinci Resolve is really smart with its node structure and what you're previewing on the screen. So even though I am previewing my image right here, I can select the polygon node and trace the outline of our image without having them connected. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna zoom in and with my polygon node selected, I'm just gonna go in and start to create an outline of our PMG. Now your life is gonna be either harder or easier depending on how complicated your shape is. But if you do not have a nice, uh, a nicely sized shape to work with, uh, this is gonna be your option. Now there might be some more creative ways to generating this in terms of creating vectors and importing those vectors for you to work with, but a lot of times this process takes all of 60 seconds and then you're done and you're good to go. And you can spend as much or as little time as you want making this polygon mask. For me, I operate in the, the YouTube landscape, so precision isn't always the biggest of deals. If you're working in like commercial work or something where exact cutouts matter a bit more, go ahead and take your time here. Okay, so I've got a rough cutout of, uh, of the logo right here. And so now we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna add an extrude node, connect our polygon node to it, and then connect our image to it. And let me go ahead and toggle the preview to our extrude node. And you can see uh, it's kind of there, kind of not. There are some funky things that can happen in DaVinci Resolve when you're working with images that aren't the same resolution or aspect ratio of your composition. So you can see that our polygon node transferred, but our image is a little bit squashed. Now there are a few ways to correct this issue, either through using uh, merging on top of a background node or trying to use the resize node. But one of the easiest ways to fix this is to just add a transform node and you want the one with the XF next to it. Uncheck this option here, use size and aspect. And this will give you the ability to change the size in both the X and Y direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the best job that I can to resize this so that it fits our polygon node. Now you can do a little bit more fine tuning by holding down the control button and using that to resize things in the X and Y. But that looks just about right to me. And now again, we can go ahead and add some extrusion depth to this, add another transform node, increase the size just a smidgen so that everything's hitting the outside border. Now it might take some playing around with both the transform nodes to get the size that you'd like. But for me, this is pretty good. I really just wanted kind of like a 3D block that I could play around with. Alrighty, so here comes the fun part. Now we can animate this and do some cool things in the 3D world. The first thing I'm gonna have you do is add a merge 3D node. Merge 3D nodes work just like uh, your normal merge nodes, except they allow you to kind of connect everything to them in 3D land. So I can go ahead and plug these two guys in and if I swap over to the merge 3D node, you can see we got we got our guys on here, but they're uh, <laughs> they're kind of on top of each other right now. To fix that, what I'm going to do is after our extrude 3D nodes, I'm going to add a transform 3D node, not XF, not the normal transform 3D, and then I'm going to copy and paste that over so that I can access it for both of them. Now I can slide one off to the left and slide one off to the right. Okay, so from here, we could really do anything we wanted to with this animation. It really depends on kind of the look and effect that you're going for. I'm gonna do an example that you can follow along with and then go ahead and tailor it to whatever you need. So the next step for us is to um, add a renderer node for our merge 3D node. And what the renderer 3D node does is it converts our 3D objects and puts them into 2D space again, right? It kind of flattens everything out. So let me go ahead and do that. I would recommend on your renderer changing the software or the renderer type from software to hardware. This will help out with the processing power if you have a decent GPU. And if I were to toggle over to our media out node, we got our we got our things right there, right? There, there they are. They're they're living in uh, in 3D space, and I can even click on one of these transform 3D nodes and play around with the rotation, and boom, there we go. 
If we wanna add a little bit more complexity and depth to this, what we can also do is we can add a camera 3D node. Now the camera 3D node, when I add it and attach it to our Merge 3D, it's gonna delete what we have, but this basically gives us our frame of reference when we're looking at these objects. So if I toggle back to our Merge 3D and I move around a little bit, you can see we have our camera 3D node. Right there, there's our camera. And that's why we can't see anything because it's kind of in line with what we're looking at right now. So if you wanna do this, you can. You can collapse this left menu over here, split your preview window up. I'm gonna have our media out preview on the left-hand side. So this is what our camera 3D is seeing. I'm going to select the camera 3D node, go over to transform and just begin to pull it back a little bit until we can see our shapes again. Pretty cool, right? Now, why would we do this? Well, with a 3D camera, we can create motion outside of just moving our PNGs. Let me show you what I mean. I can toggle on the use target option to pick a target for our camera to look at. And right now it's at zero, zero, zero. It's right smack dab in the middle. And if I were to move our camera to the left and to the right, you can see we're already getting some pretty cool looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset this to zero. I'm gonna put a keyframe on frame zero for our X position, and then maybe go a full second forward, so 60 frames for me, and uh, set another keyframe. Let me go back to the beginning using this left arrow up top here. Let's move it off to the left, go over to frame 60, and bring the camera over the right. Now, if I were to play this, we got some cool motion going on, right? Shoo. Shoo. Pretty cool. We could even go all the way to the full two seconds and continue to push out our camera, so it continues to rotate. Pretty sweet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smooth this out a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse our inspector tab, go to the spline menu. I'm gonna select our camera 3D node. And if you don't already have this option toggled on, I would recommend turning on the show only selected tool option. It'll kind of hide all the other nodes that you're not worried about. So now we just see our camera 3D node. Let's go ahead and check on the X offset. We can refit our window size by pressing these buttons right up top here. Now we have our motion. If I select everything and hit F, it's gonna flatten out our motion. And what we can even do is mess around and kind of ramp this thing up. So we start moving pretty quick and then we slow down as we start to go this way. What I can also do is I can select our middle node and hit S and it's gonna smooth that out. Now we've got like a really smooth motion as it continues to pan away. So again, I selected our camera node. I zoomed to fit. I selected all of these nodes and then hit F to flatten things out. So I got some handles for a curve and we started messing with it. So now what we can do is we can combine our camera motion with motion from our 3D extruded images. And I don't know, you can create some cool effects. So I'm gonna start at frame zero. I'm gonna set some keyframes for our DaVinci logo. I'm gonna start it. I think I'm gonna keyframe the Y position and maybe the, yeah, maybe the Y rotation. So do something like that. And I'm gonna go all the way over to the end of our composition. And let me, let me do two full rotations. So that would be 720 degrees. And let me keyframe this, go back to the beginning and bring this down. So what I did again, I, since I, that might've been a little bit confusing is I want this to come from the bottom up. So what I'm doing is I set our final keyframe at our resting position and then the beginning frame is off screen. So if I were to scrub forward, it's gonna look something like this. And again, we can smooth out our splines for that. So I have my transform 3D node selected. I'm in my spline window. If I select these, either by selecting them or hitting control A and hit F. I can now ramp these guys up a little bit. And now it'll kind of speed up and go quickly and then come to rest. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna apply the exact same kind of transform to our shark guy. So I'm gonna delete the old transform, copy and paste the new one under there. So all I did was copy this one, apply it to this guy. Oh, and you know what? I need to bring it over in the X just a little bit so they're not lined up. Now they both 
apply onto screen. A couple things that I might do the help with effect like this is, again, it's gonna depend on what you're going for, but I might add a background to this so that it's moving on top of a background. So I have this background of blue sky, green grass, it's, you know, it's a common one. And what I can do is I can attach this background to an image plane. So now our background is in 3D land and I can connect that to our merge 3D node. And now our background is in 3D space as well. So I need to resize this a little bit. So with my image plane selected, I'm gonna go over to transform. I'm gonna increase the size a good bit and I'm gonna bring it back in the Z direction. So it's a little bit behind our images. And let me make it pretty big. And if it's not quite fitting in a frame like this, so I've kind of maxed out the size and it's still, still not really in frame. What I can do is I can go over to the camera 3D node and I can mess around with the angle of view. So I can kind of zoom in here on our objects and then go back and reposition this thing so it's in frame. So now all we need to do is we just need to make sure our background kind of stays in frame throughout this entire time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the beginning and yeah, you can see it's a little bit off frame. So with my image plane 3D node selected, I'm gonna go over to the X position, keyframe the X position, and you might need to change some of these other uh, coordinates depending on what your camera motion looks like. And I am going to bring it over to the right, scrub forward, let's go to the end and bring it back over to the left. And now if I scrub in between, it looks like we might have to do a little adjusting. So with our spline menu open, you can see we're getting cut off here a little bit. I'm gonna go over to the spline window and mess around with the spline. So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten these two points by selecting them and pressing F. And now we might be okay. Yeah, it looks like we're okay. So I know we're running a bit long, but real quick, a couple of things that you can do to help elevate shots like these is with your renderer 3D node selected, you can go over to the settings tab and turn on motion blur. And if I click back to some of the parts where there's a lot of motion, you can see our edges are beginning to blur. This will be taxing on your PC though. So I only recommend turning it off or I only recommend turning it on when your animations are finished and you're ready to render. Another thing that you can do, and again, I hesitate to recommend this because this will be pretty taxing on your PC, is you can turn on depth of field. And what that does is give you some focus blur on things that are in the foreground compared to the background. But this is what it looks like when you're all done. Now I know I moved pretty quickly through that back half, so if you do have questions, feel free to leave a comment or even better, come by and join the Discord. It's a much better way for me to interact with you guys and answer some of your DaVinci Resolve questions. But I hope this was helpful and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.